Ujambo msikilizaji na karibu kwa kipindi chetu cha siku ya leo. Uh, leo ningependa tuendelee na kipindi chetu cha Orphan Spirit na ningependa tuangalie uh, kuna vitu vinaitwa the characteristics of an orphan spirit. Na kabla ya hiyo tutasoma katika kitabu cha Luka mtakatifu 15 uh, mstari wa 11 Biblia inasema ya kwamba akasema mtu mmoja alikuwa na wana wawili yule mdogo akamwambia babaye Baba, ni sehemu ya mali inayo niangukia. Akawagawia vitu vyake. Hata baada ya siku si nyingi, yule mdogo akakusanya vyote akasafiri kwenda inji ya mbali. Akatapanya mali zake huko kwa maisha ya uesharati. Alipokuwa amekwisha tumia yo vyote, njaa kuu iliingia inji ile. Yeye naye akaanza kuhitaji. Waja tuombe. Baba katika jina la Yesu mfalme tunasema asande kwa sababu wewe ni mungu wa ajabu, mungu wa baraka, mungu wa ushindi juu ya maisha yetu. Na kushukuru kwa sababu ya kila mmoja ambaye anasikiliza ujumbe huu ya kwamba ukaweza kuwa ujumbe wa damana juu ya maisha yake na juu ya kazi yote ambaye anafanya. Nasema asande kwa ajili mfalme wewe ndiyo unaweza tena unabariki katika jina la Yesu Kristo na wama na kuamini. Amen. Uh, kwa hivyo msikilizaji uh, kipindi ambacho kilipita tulikuwa tunaangalia kuhusu tu orphan spirit na tukawa tunasema ya kwamba roa huyatima ni roa ambaye anakuja kwa maisha ya mtu. Uh, na tunapoongea juu ya roa ya huyatima na nilikuwa naeleza kwamba kuna yatima mara mbili. Yatima wa kwanza ni yule ambaye is a physical orphan whereby probably you have lost your parents. Uh, then we have what we call the spiritual orphan. Spiritual orphan is what I'm looking at time to time. Na nilisema kwamba, the worst thing is becoming a spiritual orphan. But if you could be a physical orphan, but not spiritually orphan, then you can be strong in the Lord. Kwa sababu, Biblia na tuimiza. Ndiyo maana tunaona ya kwamba katika kitabu cha Yohana Mtakatifu kumina ina ya kwamba, usifadhaike mioni. Uh, kwa hivyo, we, we are not to be troubled, but we need to trust in God. Na hapa ndipo tunaangalia na tunaona ya kwamba, kuna mamba ambayo Kristo alikuwa na yanena wakati ule. Na siku ya leo ningependa tutumie uh, hadithi ya wana wawili wa mtu mmoja. Ambapo nataka tuangalie roho wa uyatima uh, uh, kuwili ambapo tunamuona huyu uh, kijana mdogo pia tunamuona yule mkubwa uh, wote wawili wana kumbana na roho inaitwa roho wa uyatima. Kwa hivyo tunapata ya kwamba roho wa uyatima huja kupitia kwa njia nyingi. Ambapo tunaona Biblia nsema kwamba uh, mtu mmoja alikuwa na watoto wawili na mdogo akauliza mali na alipochukua ile mali akaenda na akaenda kufanya kwa raha zake na baadaye akatapanya na kuharibu ile mali. Baada ya kumalisa kuharibu ile mali akawa anahitaji. Kwa hivyo nataka kuzungumzia juu ya uh, uhitaji <coughs> kwa sababu ya uyatima. Naam uh, mara nyingi katika jamii zetu tunapokaa tunapata ya kwamba kuna watu wengi sana ambao wana roho wa uyatima na roho wa uyatima husababisha mtu kudai uh, kwa mfano kuna watoto ambao wanadai mali kutoka kwa wazazi wao na wanajigamba ya kwamba lazima wakaweza kupewa ile mali na hiyo yote we natokana kwa sababu uh, wana roho wa uyatima ndani ya maisha yao Na wakati mwingine pengine wanapouliza ile mali hawajui jinsi ya kuweza kuitumia. Na hapo ndipo wanapata ya kwamba mwisho wake wanakuwa na itaji. Na pia mara nyingi <coughs> roa uyatima ametokea pala ambapo unaona ya kwamba pengine mzazi ameaga dunia aa, na watoto pia wanatapanya wana, mali ambaye aliacha na wanaacha wana, wana ikiwa katika hali ya ukiwa. Hiyo yote inakuwa kwa sababu ya kitu kinaitwa the orphan spirit. Kwa hivyo orphan spirit inakufanya uweze kuona ya kwamba eh, uweze kudai, uweze kusema ya kwamba na itaji hiki na hiki. Baadaye unapata ya kwamba kile ulicho kuwa nataka hakiko tena na unabaki bila chochote. Kwa hivyo uh, tunaona ya kwamba uyu kijana ambaye ni mdogo alichukua mali na akaenda safari ya mbali. Yani akaachana na baba yake. Na vile vile sisi tukio wa kristo, there is a way tunaenda kansani, tunaomba, mungu anatubariki. Na kwa sababu kuna roa wa uyatima ndani ya maisha yetu, tunaachana na maneno ya kanisa. Tunaenda safari ya mbali. Na kwa hivyo tunapoenda kwa sababu tumebarikiwa, pengine umepata kazi, 
Watu wengi sana wameenda makanisani wameombewa na Mungu ameweza kuwabariki. Na wame, walikuwa pengine wamesoma lakini hawajapata wa, kazi. Na walipoenda kanisani wakaombewa baada ya kupata kazi, wakasahau ya kwamba waliomba na Mungu ndiye alisababisha wakapate ile kazi. Baadaye wanahama kanisani. Wanaenda kwa shughuli zao ikiwa ni siku ya Jumapili, wanaona kwamba ni siku ya kupumzika kwa hivyo wanakaa nyumbani badala ya kwenda kanisani ili wakaweza kusikiliza neno la Mungu. Kwa hivyo hapa tunaona ya kwamba mfano wa huyu kijana ambaye alikuwa ni mdogo na akachukua mali akaenda akatapanya akafanyia kwa mamba ambayo ni mabaya. Baadaye Biblia inatuambia kwamba alipokuwa amekwisha tumia vyote njaa kuu iliingia inji ile yeye naye akaanza kuitaji. So imagine kwa sababu ya roho uyatima wa huyu kijana ana, anatoka anaacha kwao kwenye kuna mali na anachukua mali anaenda nayo anaitumia vibaya baada ya kuitumia vibaya e, mali inaisha na alafu pia mahali ambapo ameenda ama inji aliyosafiri njaa ikaingia na yeye akawa anahitaji kwa sababu hana chochote kwa hivyo wakati wewe e, huna baba ndani ya maisha yako unahitaji katika maisha yako na hapo hitaji hili linatokana kwa sababu una uyatima ndani ya maisha yao. Yaani unakaa katika hali ya ukiwa. Yaani huna jambo lolote. Huna lile ambalo unaweza kufanya. So sometimes whenever we we desert the church, tunakataa kanisa, tunakataa neno la Mungu na tunaenda mbali wakati tumesafiri katika inji ambayo tumeenda na sio ya Mungu. Yaani tumeenda katika ulimwengu na tumekubali mambo ya shetani juu ya maisha yetu. Hapo ndipo tunaanza kukumbana na mambo kama haya ambapo wanapata ya kwamba sasa kuna vitu ambavyo unahitaji lakini haviwezi kufanyika katika maisha yako. Waweza kuwa hata unapata magonjwa lakini unashindwa vile unaweza kuomba kwa sababu huna roho ndani ya maisha yako. Na roho mtakatifu ndiye anatuongoza ili tukaweze kuhubiri injili ili ya ukweli, anaweza kutusaidia ili tukaweze kuomba na Mungu akaweza kujibu maombi yetu. Kwa hivyo unapokuwa katika hali ya uhitaji na umeenda katika inji ambayo kuna njaa, yani kumaanisha kwamba katika inji hiyo hakuna chochote hakuna neno la Mungu, hakuna kitu chochote. Kwa hivyo ulikuwa unamjua Mungu. Na baada ya kuomba Mungu akakusaidia na akakupa hekima na akakupa vyote alivyokupa, we ulichukua na ukaenda. Na ukasafiri katika inji ambayo haina Mungu. Na kwa hivyo ukaanza kufanya mambo ambayo sio ya kiungu. Kwa hivyo unatembea katika ulimwengu ambao unahitaji na mahitaji yako yamekuwa mengi na bado hakuna suluhisho katika maisha yako. Kwa hivyo hapo kilichokufanya na kilichokuzungusha kutoka mahali ulipotoka ilikuwa kwa sababu ya roho ya uyatima. Na hapa ndipo tunaona kwamba watu wengi wamekuwa na roho ya uyatima ambapo uh, wana make a lot of demands, wana make a lot of things but at the end of the day vitu vyote wanavyouliza hata haviwasaidii badala yake vinakuwa bala juu ya maisha yao. Kwa hivyo sisi kama watu tunao mjua Mwenyezi Mungu lazima tukaweza kujua ya kwamba tusiweze kusonga mbali na Mungu. Tusiweze kuona ya kwamba Mungu hajatusaidia katika njia, njia moja ama nyingine. Wacha tuone vile Biblia inasema akawa akitamani kujishibisha kwa maganda kwa maganda waliokula nguruwe wala hapana mtu aliyempa kitu. Alipozingatia moyoni mwake alisema ni watumishi wangapi wa baba yangu wanaokula chakula na kusaza na mimi hapa nakufa kwa njaa sasa huyu kijana ambaye ni kijana tunamuita prodigal son kila wakati tunaita kijana uh, mpotofu tunaona ya kwamba huyu kijana mpotofu alipotea kwa sababu ya kuwa na kitu kinaitwa the orphan spirit na kwa hivyo baada ya kwenda akapitia katika hali ngumu njaa ikampiga akatafuta chakula kuona na alipopewa kazi ya kusimamia nguruwe ikawa yale makombo yanayobaki ya nguruwe ndiye anakula. Kwa hivyo akala yale makombo na akakaa katika hali iliyo mbaya. Na alipokaa chini akaona ya kwamba mambo sio mazuri. Hili ndilo swali alikuwa anajiuliza. Na akasema ya kwamba a, a, akawa akitamani kujishipisha kwa maganda waliokula nguruwe wala hapana mtu aliyempa kitu alipozingatia moyoni mwake alisema ni watumishi wangapi wa baba yangu wanaokula chakula na kusasa na mimi hapa nakufa kwa njaa yani ni watumishi wangapi yani baba yake alikuwa ameajiri watu na watu wanafanya kazi wanakula vizuri lakini yeye ameajiriwa chakula hapewi anangojea kungangana na nguruwe ili akaweze kula kwa hivyo because of the orphan spirit 
aliweza kukula pamoja na nguruwe because of the orphan spirit aliweza kukaa na kupitia mambo yaliyo makumu katika maisha yake na baadaye tunaona ya kwamba baada ya huyu kijana kujua kwamba mambo sio mazuri akapata akili timamu ikakuja back to his sense na akasema ya kwamba kwa nini mimi niumie hapa sasa hapo ni moyoni mwake so the fatherhood inaanza kuingia ambapo tunaona ya kwamba the orphan spirit inamsumbua na baada ya kumsumbua akaanza kuona hapana siwezi kuendelea kukaa katika this orphan spirit wacha nitoke ndani ya orphan spirit sasa nichukue the fatherhood ya kwamba bado mimi najua nina baba yangu sijui ni wangapi ambao umejua kwamba despite the fact umekuwa unaangaika sometimes you know people are very good watu wanaenda kanisani wanamwabudu Mungu wanamjua Mungu wanasema mazuri kuhusu Mwenyezi Mungu lakini wakati wanapofika nje wanaenda kutafuta waganga wachawi wawasaidie ili wakaweze kufaulu katika maisha yao lakini baadaye unataka kuona ya kwamba wanajihusisha sana sana na Mungu kwa hivyo hizi vitu ambavyo vinaitwa the orphan spirit ni spirit ambaye inakutoa kwa Mungu na inaanza kukupeleka kwa mambo ya ulimwengu. Kwa hivyo unaanza kufikiri kama watu wa ulimwengu, unaanza kufanya mambo bila unavyotaka. So you lack a, a father in your life. You become like a fatherless. Despite the fact you can have your physical father, lakini una, unakaa ukisema sioni maana ya huyu 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 baba, sioni maana yake katika maisha yangu. Why do you have such like things? It is the orphan spirit that rotates around your life. Sometimes Some fathers are not responsible. Na sio baba wazuri sana kwa watoto. Na in most cases uh, I sometimes have experienced that in many uh, children kuna watoto ambao unapata their fathers are very uh, unable probably to assist. Uh, in African culture sometimes unaona wazazi wanakuwa very funny especially a father. Kama ana pesa na mtoto anahitaji kitu akimuuliza hata asemi ya kwamba hana pesa ananyamaza tu. So sometimes it brings disagreements because of the uh, communication system the, how it is done back at home. Mtoto anafikiria baba yake ampendi, kumbe baba yake anampenda. The only thing the father has failed to say is that I don't have money. Now still some children even if the father says sijapata pesa sahi, they still have that orphan spirit. So the orphan spirit drives them to do the wrong things. So sometimes because of the orphan spirit, orphan spirit in sababisha wewe ukaweze kuwa na madhara mengi ukaweze kuwa na mambo mengi ukaweze kuwa na majeraha mengi hata wakati unapojaribu jambo lolote linakatalika kwa sababu the orphan spirit takes you over so that it becomes part and parcel of your life na inakufinya na inahakikisha kwamba you either have to comply with it so in most cases you comply with the orphan spirit kwa sababu the orphan spirit has taken over your life So huyu kijana moyoni mwake akaanza kusema baba yangu ana chakula cha kutosha. Na kwa hivyo alipomaliza hivyo hivi ndivyo aliongea na akasema nitaondoka nitakwenda kwa baba yangu na kumwambia baba nimekosa juu ya mbingu na mbele yako. Sistahili kuitwa mwana wako tena. Nitafanya kama mmoja wa watumishi wako. Kwa hivyo huyu ni mwana ambaye because of still the orphan spirit anarudi kwa baba yake na sasa anaenda tena akuwe mtumishi kwao yani akuwe mmoja wa wafanyikazi wale ambao baba yake ameajiri kwa nini why do we have that to happen to our lives it is because we are facing the orphan spirit ulipo alipotoka nyumbani alitoka akiwa amechukua mali ya baba yake kama mwana anaporudi nyumbani anarudi akifikiria kwamba yeye sio mwana anaenda kama mtu mwingine na kwa sababu ya matatizo aliyapitia so the orphan spirit imetupeleka mpaka tumefinywa tumefika mwisho You made a decision out of the orphan spirit. Ukawa umejeruhiwa, ukawa umefanya mambo ambayo sio mazuri na ukawa ume, ume, unaonyesha ushujaa ya kwamba wewe ni shujaa. So sometimes in our families, sometimes in our homes, sometimes the things that we do are affecting our lives because we are having what we call an orphan spirit. So an orphan spirit takes us away from what God wants us to do. So it is good that you need to make a prayer, you need to ask yourself and ask God that Father I need you in my life so that God can become part and parcel of your life. Wacha Mungu akaweze kuchukua ushukani na akawe kimbilio katika maisha yako ya kwamba kila jambo ambalo unafanya, kila um, eh, lolote ambalo unapitia likaweze kuja na kueleweka katika vitu vyote ambavyo tunafanya. Kwa hivyo ni vyema tena ni vizuri ya kwamba sisi tunapomjua Mwenyezi Mungu na sisi tunapomtumikia Mwenyezi Mungu lazima tukaweze kuomba ya kwamba roho wa uyatima akaweze kutoka ndani ya maisha yetu. Kwa sababu when you have an orphan spirit utaenda kwenu lakini utafika kama sio kwenu. Yaani unataka kuwa kama mtu mwingine ambaye sio wa huko. 
It is because the orphan spirit, it haunts you, it takes over your life, it makes you to look uncomfortable even when you are at your home. And that's exactly what was happening to this young man. Na Biblia inaendelea tena kusema ya kwamba, uh, akaondoka, akaenda kwa babaye, alipokuwa angali mbali, baba yake alimuona. Akamuonea uruma, akaenda mbio, akamuangukia shingoni, akampuzu sana. Yule mwana akamwambia baba, Nimekosa juu ya mbingu na mbele yako. Sistahili kuitwa mwana wako tena. Lakini baba aha akamwambia watumwa wake, lileteni upesi vazi lililo bora. Mkamfike mtieni na pete kidoleni na viatu miguuni. Mleteni ndama yule aliyenona mkachinje nasi tule na kufurai kwa kuwa huyu mwanangu alikuwa amekufa na naye amefufuka alikuwa amepotea naye ameonekana wakaanza kushangilia kwa hivyo wapendwa tunaona hapa ya kwamba uh, huyu kijana alipofanya hatua na akaanza kusonga ili akaweze kufika kwao baba yake alimuonea kwa umbali na biblia inatuambia kwamba baba yake alikimbia na akampuzu na akamwambia karibu nyumbani lakini naye akawa anamwambia nimekosa kwa hivyo ni vizuri tukaweze kujua kwamba the orphan spirit eh, it is in our lives na sometimes the orphan spirit has affected us to destroy our relationship with our fathers but at the end of the day our fathers have no problem ndio hapo tunaona kwamba baba anakimbia na kumlaki mtoto kwa sababu alikuwa anamtafuta kwa miaka mingi so sometimes because of the orphan spirit umekataa kusikia neno la Mungu umekataa kujua kwamba kuna vitu vizuri ambavyo Mungu anaweza kutenda so sometimes the orphan spirit makes you not to open up not to speak the truth it makes you to think that nikisema hii ni mbaya so the orphan spirit keeps you to stay under attack yani uko chini ya utumwa na shetani ame take over your life ndio kitu kilikuwa kinafanyika kwa huyo kijana na kwa hivyo tunaona ya kwamba The same same orphan spirit is now coming and catching up with the elder son in the home wakati huyu anapo arrive. So the orphan spirit in between the two is arriving. So sometimes you can be in the church, you can be together with people but you still have the orphan spirit within the place where you are. Kwa hivyo ni vizuri tukaweza kujua na tukaelewe ya kwamba haya mambo ni mzuri. Na baba yake akamleta kijana nyumbani wakachinja ngombe nono na wakala na wakafurai na wakashangilia lakini wacha tuone vile biblia inasema mstari wa 25 uh, bali yule mwanawe mkubwa alikuwako shamba na alipokuwa akija na kukaribia nyumba alisikia sauti ya nyimbo na, ma, na machezo akaita mtumishi mmoja akamuuliza mambo haya maana yake nini akamwambia ndugu yako amekuja na baba yako amemchinja ndama aliyenona na sababu amempata tena yu mzima. Kwa hivyo huyu kijana alikuwa shambani na akasikia kelele na akashindwa kwani hatujakuwa na sherehe hapa hakuna mpango wote. Kwa hivyo akaita mmoja wa watumishi na mtumishi akamuelezea mambo yanayoendelea. Wacha tuone kile kilichofanyika. Ah um, akakasirika akakataa kuingia ndani basi babaye alitoka nje akamsihi because of the orphan spirit tunaona ya kwamba the orphan spirit imetoka kwa yule kijana ambaye sasa amekubali baba na ameenda mahali baba yake yako sasa huyu mkubwa naye amepata the orphan spirit imeingia ndani ya maisha yake na akakasirika hasira anger is part of the orphan spirit those are the characteristics ambazo nataka tuangalie ili tukaweze kuona what are some of the characteristics ambazo zinaleta the orphan spirit so tunaona ya kwamba sasa huyu kijana naye orphan spirit ikaingia ndani ya maisha yake amekaa na amekasirika baba yake akatoka akamsihi so sometimes there are some of you uh, you might be even in the church kuna mambo ambayo yanaendelea atumekasirika hata mtumishi Eh, anakuja kuongea na wewe ama wazazi wako ama watu hata inaweza kuwa ni mwanafunzi shuleni ama mtu tu rafiki yake anajaribu ku advise but umekataa na umekasirika all this is because of the orphan spirit so tunaona ya kwamba huyu akakasirika ah, akamjibu baba yake akasema tazama mimi nimekutumikia miaka mingapi hii wala sijakosa amri yako wakati wowote lakini 
kuja nipa mimi mwanambuzi nifanye furaha na marafiki zangu imagine huyu jamaa anaongea juu ya mwanambuzi lakini anakaa kwa mali ya baba yake yeye ndiye anatakana kulinda mali ya baba yake huyu alipotea na akapotea na mali ya baba yake lakini bado huyu ana, anaongea kuhusu maswala anayopitia so is complicating his life ya kwamba hata mwanambuzi yani eh, mali yote ambayo iko kwa boma yao anafikiria juu ya mwanambuzi the often spirit makes you think even of the small small things only you don't see the big picture of what is there kwa hivyo often spirit imetoka kwa huyu na imeingia kwa yule ambaye amekaa kwa boma na yule ambaye anakaa na baba yake. Kwa hivyo anaanza kudharau na kukataa baba yake. So sometimes when we start rejecting our parents, we start rejecting our spiritual fathers, our physical fathers and biological fathers or the guardians who are taking our lives is because of the often spirit that we are encountering in our lives. So it makes us not to have that comfort. It makes us now to start fighting uh, against Uh, what we are doing. Kwa hivyo ni vizuri tuanze kuangalia tukaone. Na ilipoendelea lakini alipokuja huyo mwana wako aliyekula vitu vyako pamoja na makahaba umemchinjia yeye ndama aliyenona. Akamwambia mwanangu we u pamoja nami siku zote na vyote nilivyo navyo ni vyako. Kwa hivyo baba anamwambia umekuwa nami kwa muda wote. Vitu vyote vilivyo hapa ni vyako. Na huyu alienda na sasa amerudi na amekula vyake hana. So despite the fact ya kwamba baba amemkaribisha huyu mwana mpotefu, yeye anamwambia huyu kwamba mali iliyo hapa ni yako kwa sababu iliachwa kwa mikono yako. Umekuwa hapa ukilinda hii mali na hii mali ni yako. But because of the orphan spirit huyu hataki kujua hii. So sometimes jealousy is part of this and it makes us to live under the orphan spirit it makes us to live under attack it makes us to live under demonic uh, oppression kwa hivyo it attacks our lives and takes over because of the orphan spirit so orphan spirit inakuwa ni kwamba it takes over and destroys our lives destroys our families destroys our relationship na kwa hivyo it makes relationships to be shaken up so ni vizuri ya kwamba tukaweza kujua kwamba our god wants us to start changing our lives So when you see people isolating themselves then they are facing what we call the uh, uh, orphan spirit. Orphan spirit ilifanya huyu kijana akajitenga peke yake, akakataa kuingia kwa nyumba, akakataa kuhusika pamoja na watu wengine. So akawa peke yake because he's facing what we call an orphan spirit. So an orphan spirit attacks you and it takes over your life and it makes you to lose control about your life. So it is important that we need to understand all this. Ah, tena kufanya furaha na shangwe ilipasa kwa kuwa huyu ndugu yako alikuwa amekufa naye amefufuka alikuwa amepotea naye ameonekana kwa hivyo baba yake ana justify kwa nini anafanya sherehe kwa sababu alifikiri kijana alikufa kumbe amekuja kumaanisha amefufuka alikuwa amepotea sasa ameonekana kwa hivyo ni vizuri afanye sherehe kwa hivyo sometimes we need to ask ourselves what kind of life sisi tunaishi na tunaelewa namna gani kulingana na vile Kristo anatu uh, anatunenea so the characteristics of an orphan spirit so we have what we call the spiritual orphan heart um, you may have physical parents but they stay uh, you stay but they stay under attack so sometimes even the orphan spirit can be through your parents inaweza kuja through your parents because when they are attacked they also attack you they cause some changes in your life kuna wazazi ambao they don't support their children they don't care about their children so they have made the children to feel the orphan spirit sometimes kuna watoto ambao ukikutana nao unasikia hata wakikwambia kwamba sisi ni kama hatuna baba so it is like the father is doing nothing but to some extent despite the fact that that father does not provide siku hiyo baba anaweza kufa ama akosekane wale watoto wataanza ku realize the importance of our father in their lives. So sometimes there are irresponsible parents who are existing and their fathers. But the day they misses in the house is when you realize even as a mother that you are lacking something. You realize as a child you are lacking something. There is something that our father does. So fatherhood is very very much important. Na hapa ndio tunaona kwamba one of the characteristic ambayo tunataka kuangalia ni kwamba an orphan spirit is composed of misuse of one's life and wealth. So when you have what you call an orphan spirit you are full of misuse 
You like misusing things, you misuse your life, and also you misuse the wealth you have. Una mali lakini unatapanya tu, unaitumia vibaya. So when you start doing that, you must know that that is what you call an orphan spirit. So an orphan spirit makes you not to bring things together, but to destroy and get them far away from where you are. The prodigal son had an orphan spirit that had him demand for wealth from his father. So kwa nini huyu kijana anauliza mali na mali yenyewe hawezi kuilinda? Anarudi akiwa maskini. Is is coming back when he is in poverty, language poverty and he had nothing. Alienda akanunua suti mzuri, kila kitu mzuri, aka pika raa zote vile alikuwa anataka, but at the end is coming back with nothing. So the end of the orphan spirit it makes you poor. So when you face an orphan spirit, you start well and you end up in a bad way. So any person facing the orphan spirit will always never listen to advice. Hawasikilizi. Kuna watoto wanachukua anga hata mashamba kwa maboma zao, alafu wanauza, ati hii ni mali yangu, wamenigawa, baba amenipa. At the end of the day, unasikia alikuwa na yeka kumi, unasikia imebaki moja. Kidoko unasikia is landless. Kwa nini? Because he's facing what we call an orphan spirit. Na wakati anakuwa advice, anasema maisha ni yangu, we shika yako. So it is good that we need to start understanding these things that the orphan spirit has attacked many people. And it has come in the name, wacha ni chisoti, wacha ni one ima, neno vile inaenda. But at the end of the day, you are not sorting yourself. Instead, you are becoming more poorer. And you are going to end up without anything. Diyo maana wana sikia kwa ma, eh, na watu walikuwa na mali, mali ilienda wapi. It went because you face what we call an orphan spirit. You don't know how to take care of the wealth. You only know how to use it. Most people know how to spend, but they don't know how to look for that uh, and protect and guard that wealth to be there. So those are the things that are affecting us in most cases. Then people who uh, use force to get what they want face the orphan spirit. We unataka kitu na unatumia nguvu. Unalazmisha ya kwamba unataka the way this prodigal son did. Uyu kijana mpotefu. Anauliza, analazmisha baba yaka ampe mali. But at the end of the day, is coming without it. Kwa hivyo tunawana ya kwamba, this orphan spirit, it keeps you away from accepting the reality. Ya kwamba, despite the fact that you have a father, you are, not, you are disobeying your own father. Because you are looking at him, he is not doing what you want. So sometimes we need to pray and ask God that the orphan spirit may get out of our lives. Uh, the, of, the prodigal son had isolated himself from his family. Yeye alitoka akaenda mbali kutokana na jamii yake. The same same isolation is found when the prodigal son came back. Then the elder son also isolated himself. He refused to go in the house. Akakataa kuenda hata kusherekea. So tunaona ya kwamba all this is happening because these are the characteristics of the orphan spirit. You don't want to sit with people. Unajueka mahali, unakaa peke yako because you are under attack. You are facing a lot of powers of darkness. So ni vizuri tuanze kujua. Ya kwamba mungu anatuhitaji na anataka tutoke katika hui roa wa uyatima. Kwa sababu roa wa uyatima ata take over our lives. Uh, when you want to get out of the, the, the thing that makes you not to understand that you have the orphan spirit is that you lack the sense. Because when he came back to his sense, he said let me go back to our home. Wacha nirudi nyumbani kwetu. Do you have a sense in your life? Have you assessed yourself and asked wewe unaka na uko na roa wa uyatima ama apana? So it pushes one to entitlement. Kitu ambacho uh, kinaitu entitlement is hii shamba ni yangu, mimi ni gawe, mali yangu, mimi nataka kuenda, nataka kufanya shukuli zangu, I want this and I want this. Why do you say all that? That's entitlement. But at the end of the day, once you are given, the same thing, entitlement is happening to the elder son. Mwenye alibaki, anaanza kuuliza baba yake. Na kusema kwani mimi ujai nifanya sheria, sheria yoyote, uyu mutu hamekuja, uyu ni mukora, mara sijui nini. So all this entitlement is facing the two. Whereby uyu alikuwa entitled na akapewa mali yake, akaenda, akatapanya. Na huyu nae, ako na mali ameka nayo, and is talking about, is not even sure ya kwamba mali ni yake. So it is the orphan spirit that makes you, you are staying even in a land, but you are not accepting to use it to till and get some money, and get some, do some projects. Kuna watu wako na shamba lakini wanalala njaa. Hawalimi, hawafanyi chochote. Because they are facing what you call the orphan spirit. They are not accepting that they are entitled to do that. So you find that all this is happening. Always had it and angry. Uh, na, and anger brings so very many things. Kwa hivyo, kila wakati asira 
tunaona Biblia inatuambia kwamba yule mkubwa aliposikia mdoka amekuja akakasirika. So hasira ambayo uko nayo it is because of the orphan spirit. So the orphan spirit attacks you and you start looking at each other as enemies. You start encountering and finding that things are not working. So it is good that we need to make prayers. We need to ask God so that God can be part and parcel of our lives. Then feeling discriminated and unwanted. Kila wakati unaona kwamba uitajiki. So it is the same thing where we find this prodigal son. Wakati alienda he fell and he remained discriminated. Akabaki na ngurue peke yake. Imagine in a state where you can only communicate with the pigs. Hakuna kitu kingine because that's what he wanted and that's the life he encountered. So you can encounter the life you are encountering today because you planned about it. You thought about it. You sensed about it. But because of that you are facing what we call an orphan spirit. So an orphan spirit takes you to the land where you are discriminated. You remain alone. You have no friends. You have no one to talk to. There's no one who can give you food. There's no one who can even help you. Ata advice peke yake huwezi pata until you think alone and find it out. So now angry we find that this man was angered because he had his father uh, had I just attended to the prodigal son. The same prodigal son also. So we find that the two things are affecting the two. That these people were facing the orphan spirit as two. And they were going on without understanding it. One cannot accept his or herself. Him or herself. Watu ambao wajajikubali, bado hawajiamini, wanaona kwamba wameshindwa katika maisha, wanaona ya kwamba mambo yao, sio mazuri, vitu wanavyo fanya, wanaona ya kwamba ni vigumu. So they are experiencing a lot of challenges in life. So friends, wakati tunapoenda through all these situations, we undergo what we call the orphan spirit and the orphan spirit takes over our lives and it makes us not to go on well. One feels to be abandoned, always unaona uka abandoned, always hearted and angry with everyone around you, ukiona watu karibu na wewe, husiki vizuri and also is jealousy about others. You are jealousy and you feel insecure. So you you are always insecure. You find that things are not working. Things are not right on your side. Easy vitu zote zinatendeka because you are facing what we call an orphan spirit. So I want to let you know that ni vizuri tukaweze kujua mambo ya Mungu. Tukubali Kristo aka take over our lives na kaanze kuzungumuza pamoja nasi katika kazi yetu ambayo tunafanya. Nataka kumalizia kusema ya kwamba how to overcome the orphan spirit. Number one, you can overcome the Holy Spirit, the orphan spirit by one when you come back to your senses. In Luke chapter 15 verse 17 the Bible says he came back to his sense na akaanza kusema baba yangu ana mali kwa nini mimi niteseke hapa si niende kama mtumishi watumishi wanakula na kusasa vyakula so sometimes there are many good things that are in the house of God but you have refused to natembea huko nje kuwaganga na watu wengine people are in trouble today mtu anatembea kuna people who are staffing Mtu ana, ana, anaacha kwao ameacha chakula anaenda shakahola kukufa at because you have gone to pray and fast yani wewe you are facing an orphan spirit hiyo sio ukristo jamani moving from somewhere you go a staff and die eh we call it mercy killing yani kukufa kifo kile ambacho unalazimisha tu ya kwamba uweze kukufa let us get out of such things because such things are coming because we are having what you call an orphan spirit ama unauza mali yako you go and give it to somebody else that jesus is coming very soon that's the worst thing that you can make in life then number two, make a step and move from your orphan spirit like the prodigal son wakati huyo prodigal son a realize ya kwamba is facing the orphan spirit aliweza ku make step na akaamka na akasema mimi natoka katika maisha haya na mimi narudi kwa baba yangu can you think of getting back to your father accept that you are a son in the kingdom of god that's number three. that's one thing that you must develop that you must accept that you are a son in the kingdom of god lazima ukubaliane nayo then another thing uh, so do not force sonship that's one thing you must know that you are already a son do not say ask for entitlement to be a son already you are a son and that's the mistake that was made by the elder son and the prodigal son then number four, develop the intimacy with the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, I will not leave you orphans. John chapter 14 verse 16 to 18. Inaongea kwamba, he's not going to leave us orphans, but he's going to send his Holy Spirit. 
when you encounter the power of the Holy Spirit and you have the intimacy with the power of the Holy Spirit, you will experience the sonship and the orphan spirit will get out of your life. Then number five is that renew your minds uh, as an individual and it will help to change your heart. So at individual level, you need to renew your mind. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, it talks about renewing your minds that transform yourself. So we need to transform ourselves, we need to renew our minds, and we need to accept Jesus in our lives. Then the last thing is that we need to ask forgiveness. Wakati uyo mwana alipojua kwamba amefanya makosa, yeye alienda kwa babaye, na akasema ya kwamba baba nisamee, na alimurudi baba yake. Kwa hivyo ni vizuri, tukamrudie mungu. Tukawarudie wazazi wetu. Tukaweze kutoka katika mambo ambaye metusumbua kwa muda mrefu. Wacha mungu wakaweze kuwabariki na tukaweze kuomba pamoja. Mwenyezi mungu na kushukuru kwa sababu ya siku ya leo na nena neno lako la baraka juu ya kila mmoja ambaye ameweza kuwa akisikiliza kipindi hiki. Ukaweze kumbariki, ukabariki jamii yake, ukabariki kazi yake na kila jamba ambalo anapitia. Leo tunaomba ya kwamba roo wa uyatima ambaye huenda ameweza kufika katika maisha yetu, ameweza kufika katika jamii zetu, ameweza kufika katika makanisa yetu na katika ibada zetu, tunamkataa ya kwamba hana uwezo juu yetu, hana uwezo juu ya kazi zetu. Ya kwamba mfalme ukaweze kuonekana katika ibada zetu na katika mambo yote ambayo tunapitia. Tunanena wema wako, tunanena baraka zako. Tunanena ushindi wako ya kwamba mfalme ukaweze kuonekana katika kila jambo ambalo tunafanya. Nasema asande kwa ajili ya uwepo wako na baraka zako ya kwamba sikaweze kuendelea kulingana mapenzi yako na shukuru kwa ajili ya kila mmoja ambaye amesikiliza kipindi hiki ya kwamba ukaweze kumbariki ukaweza kumuinua akiwa anahitaji lolote ambalo alikuwa anahitaji ya kwamba roho uyatima akaweza kutoka katika maisha yake nataka kunena ya kwamba ukaweze kumuondolea roho uyatima na ukaweze kumruhusu akaweze kuwa mwana katika nyumba ili akaweze kubali neno lako na kufanya vile linavyohitaji nasema asante maana unaweza katika jina la Yesu Kristo naomba na kuamini Amen. Wacha Mungu awabariki.